Hey friends, in this video I'll be sharing some steps that I've taken in the past year to improve my mental clarity and my mental health. It's been a while and I figure it's the perfect time to sit down and vulnerably share with you the steps that I've taken to grow as a person. I want to take a second to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Let's get into it. First off, let me say that I'm not done with or on the other side of my journey. In fact, the more that I step into it, the more I realize that I have to do. So I just want to clarify that this video is not me sitting here on a high horse telling you what you should or shouldn't do. It's a vulnerable conversation where I share some of the elements of myself that I've been working on and hopefully sharing these lessons that I've learned can add value to your lives. Every day is a new chance to be more whole and even though it's not fun and it's not easy, it does slowly but surely make life better. Step one, have an honest conversation with yourself about what you'd like to change and improve upon in your life. I highly recommend writing those things down in a journal. Getting my thoughts out of my head and down onto a piece of paper really helps me boil them down to their essence and keep myself accountable. But being real with yourself could be the hardest part of this entire process. For me, the two most pressing things were irritability and numbing. The combination of stress, aspiration, and an unbalanced work lifestyle left me feeling irritable, short-tempered, and anxious. And instead of addressing those emotions, I tried to explain them away. And what I couldn't explain away, I numbed by using a combination of marijuana, binge watching television, and treating myself with ice cream far too often. I don't want to make my situation seem more intense or dire than it was, but I didn't want to be dependent upon a substance or escapism to give myself relaxation and peace. I wanted to be able to find that with a clear mind and a healthy body. My overconsumption of the news, extreme changes in my career, and anxiety about the future all combined to leave me feeling irritable and pessimistic. I'm an optimistic person, but 2020 tested me. I needed to make some serious changes, limit my consumption of the news, let go of my attempts to try to control the future, and deal with my stress in a manner that wasn't harmful to me or to the people around me. But it all started with sitting down and having an honest conversation with myself, writing it down in my journal into action items of things that I wanted to address and improve upon. So whatever it is in your life, it all starts with that honest conversation. Step number two, talk to someone. I'm gonna be honest, speaking to a therapist has kind of been something that I've been reluctant to do in the past. I think that there is a stigma, especially for men. Our culture kind of denigrates the importance of speaking to someone instead of bottling up our emotions and our feelings. I'm a big believer in individual accountability to improve yourself, but sometimes in life you need to talk to someone. With certain issues, you can't speak to your friends and family, especially if those issues are about your friends or family. Finding the right therapist can be a challenge. That's until I found out about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy app you can use anywhere in the world that connects you with therapists across the country who specialize in a wide range of subjects. It's super easy to use and it can quickly assess your needs and connect you to your own personal professional therapist who you can begin communicating with within 48 hours. You can choose from their network of over 15,000 counselors who have expertise that may not be available in your local area. I love that you can log into your account at any time and send a message to your counselor from anywhere in the world. It's not a crisis line and it's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. You get timely, thoughtful responses, worksheets that you can do from home, plus you can schedule weekly video and phone calls from anywhere in the world. So you never have to wait in an uncomfortable waiting room like in traditional therapy. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Plus, it's free and easy Easy to change counselors if you need to. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So visit betterhelp.com slash vagabond, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, and join the over one million people who are taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Get 10% off your first month by using the link betterhelp.com slash vagabond. I've put it down 
in the description box. Step number three, find meaning. Last year, I read a book called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, a neurologist and a psychiatrist who was imprisoned by the Nazis in a concentration camp during the Second World War. It's an intense book, but it is so worth reading if you haven't read it yet. During that harrowing time of his life, he comes to the realization that what motivates people is not a desire for power or money, but a quest for meaning. Finding a meaning for our lives, something that fulfills us and makes us feel positive, was the difference between surviving and not. So while none of us can actually relate to the experiences that he underwent in his life, the theory that he developed called logotherapy really resonated with me. Logos means meaning in Greek and logotherapy, his theory, is essentially that what motivates humans is a desire for meaning, a quest for finding meaning in our lives. It's not money, it's not power, but meaning that motivates us. And if we take a look around at the world right now, it does seem that many of us are struggling to find meaning in our lives. Now, I can't sit here and tell you how to find meaning in your life. It's something that's immensely personal and is different for every single one of us. But finding that meaning is the defining challenge of our lives. I'm on this journey because I want to be the best version of myself for the people that I love in my life. And also for myself. I wanna be the best husband, son, grandson, brother, friend that I can be. And while I also want to improve myself for my own well-being, it's bigger than that. At the end of our lives when we pass away, what remains is not how much money we made or what we did or what we did for a living, it's how we made other people feel. And that is what really sticks with people after we're gone. So doesn't that make it clear what the most important thing in life is? It's how we treat others and how we make other people feel. Also, I believe there's a difference between meaning and purpose. Meaning is the overarching intention, the way someone or something is defined whereas purpose is the act of fulfilling that intention. The things that we do on a day-to-day -day in order to achieve that meaning. So while finding meaning is not something that just happens in an instant, it is something that we can work towards every single day in our lives. So I would love to know what gives your life meaning and what gives your day's purpose. Please share those down in the comment section because I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Step four, connect with nature and make time to play. Spending time in nature has always been my most tried and true method of reconnecting to my inner compass and finding balance in a chaotic world. When I picture paradise, it's this warm glade in the mountains and it's surrounded by trees, pine trees, and there's a stream you know, meandering through the middle of it. I'm sitting there in peace listening to nature and feeling the warmth of the sun on my skin. And being in wild places is the closest that I can get to that ideal that I have in my brain of what paradise looks and feels like. You know, being in wild places allows me to disconnect my brain from the tumultuous realities of modern living and reconnect with that innate simplicity of, of life. Tuning into the natural rhythm of life allows me to rid myself of unnecessary thoughts and refocus and recalibrate on what truly matters. And nature therapy is, is a thing. It's scientifically proven. More and more research is showing that spending time in nature, something as short as just like a half an hour a week, can have some serious positive health effects for you. Being in nature has been proven to improve your attention, reduce stress, better your mood, as well as reduce the risks of psychiatric disorders, and it even has noticeable, measurable upticks in empathy and cooperation. Plus, spending time in nature lowers the production of the stress hormone cortisol and increases production of both dopamine and endorphins, both of which leave you feeling happier. 
So over the past year, I have been making it mandatory every week to get outside and spend time in nature. Now, that could be something as simple as a daily walk through the park or getting out and doing a big hike with my wife and my dog. When we do that, we turn our phones off, we spend time together, and we really focus on immersing ourselves into the natural soundscape. And we've also really become absolutely addicted to gardening and growing food. There's something so rewarding about embracing um, your ability to help grow plants, nurture something which in turn nurtures you. So we've been growing as much food as we can, bringing it back into the kitchen and cooking up delicious meals together. It's something that we can do together. It helps you know, strengthen our relationship and it also is a great way to kind of give yourself a feeling of accomplishment. It gives you something delicious which nurtures your body and your soul. There's power in that. So if you can, grow something. And lastly, we need to make time to play. Our modern society only really values work and the more tired you are wearing that exhaustion as a status symbol. But we really have to make time to play. If you are gonna go play something, make sure that you're playing for fun. You're not playing for competition because when we play for competition, it brings all of these kind of you know toxic elements of like comparison, which we'll talk about later, and competition into you know into the, the zone where you should just be having fun. Super important, and it's really improved my mental health. Make time to get out and play and make time to reconnect with nature. And if you can do both of those things together, then you're really on top of it. Step five, being present. Yeah, I know, it's kind of cliche nowadays. You hear this all over the internet, all over Instagram, all over YouTube. Um, and I know that this has kind of become like a buzzword, but it's just so important and it's so accurate. And what I mean by being present is this. So many of us are living our lives either stuck in the past or worrying about the future. And when we do that, we do one of two things. If we're stuck in the past, then we're thinking about what people have said to us or done to us, and we're holding on to resentment and anger, and those feelings leave us feeling depressed, right? We're stuck in these emotions and these memories that we can't change because no matter how hard you try, you can't change the past. And when we are living in the future, we are worrying about all these different potential outcomes of things that in reality, we can't really control. When you're stuck worrying about trying to control the outcome of the future, it just leaves you feeling anxious. It left me feeling anxious. And when I was living in the past, it left me feeling resentment. So what I mean about being present is realizing, come to the realization that the only thing that we can actually experience and the only thing that we can actually control are our feelings and our emotions in the present moment. And by leaning into the present moment, by doing things like meditation to really dig into the here and the now, we can begin to kind of shift our perspectives away from worrying about the future or focusing on the past and just being here now. And so I know you've probably heard about meditation by now, it's 2021, um, but I think there is real power in it. And when I first heard about meditation, I was traveling in Southeast Asia and uh, you know I visited a Buddhist monastery and I just kind of noticed that there was just this feeling of serenity and the monks were just so calm. And now I'm not trying to say that all of us need to like stop what we're doing, give up everything and become a Buddhist monk. But I think that the power of stillness and of cultivating the ability to really be in the present through meditation is serious. 
I have over the last year and especially in the last six months made it a daily practice to sit down first thing in the morning, wake up, go outside if the weather's good or inside if it's not and sit for five to ten minutes and just meditate. And when I meditate, I just close my eyes and I just focus on my breath. I'm breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth and just focusing on breath big, full, deep breaths. And sometimes, you know, I think about what I have to do during the day and I just kind of breathe that in and let it go. And that's that anxiety going out with the breath. Or sometimes I think about the past and I can just breathe through that and remind myself to be in the here and the now. And I think that is the true power of meditation. And for me, I found it super, super helpful. And I think it's something that all of us can do. There's no price tag. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just get started and get into it and, um, and, and feel the difference because I can tell you it has made a profound change in my life. Waking up and meditating each day has just really helped me become more centered and really just embrace the now. So if you haven't tried it, give it a shot and just stick to it. Try it for like a week. Wake up every morning and meditate for five minutes for a week and let me know in the comment section if it changes your outlook. And if it does, stick with it. Step six, limit your distractions. Well, newsflash, Alex, we are the most distracted generation in the history of the world. I'm just as guilty as anybody else out there. The world that we live in is an attention economy. Even you just watching this video, I am asking for your attention and I appreciate it and I try not to waste it. When I do have your attention, if you're still here, thank you. But I feel a responsibility to not waste your time because so much of what we see and consume out there is wasting our time. It's trying to distract us from reality. It's trying to distract us from ourselves and our feelings and our emotions. We have been encouraged to spend our time doing things that distract us from reality and disconnect us from others. Whether that's playing video games or binge watching television, we all escape reality differently. Like I said, in, in the height of the pandemic in 2020, for me, it was smoking weed, binge watching Netflix and eating ice cream. And that was a vicious cycle that, you know, started as like, oh, this, this is like a Friday night in the pandemic. And yeah, you got a cool show to watch and you might as well just like feel good when you do it. And that became something that I kept going back to and back to and all of a sudden it became my new normal and left me feeling distracted, exhausted, irritable. And even though I was staying active every morning, I was waking up and exercising and seizing the day, once the evening came around and you know the sun went down, that boredom would creep back in and my escapist distraction loop would trigger again and next thing you know, I would be doing the same thing. So towards the end of summer in 2020, I became painfully aware of my situation and I made actionable changes to my life. I set limits on my social media apps, all of them across the board. You know, I do um, publish on social media for a living and so I had a tendency to like do what I needed to do but then just get sucked in and next thing you know I'm doom scrolling and so I needed to make some changes and setting limits on my distractions setting limits on my apps and putting my phone away forcing myself to do it made a huge change in my life so instead of just falling back into that distraction loop in the evening, I started slowly. I started by saying, you know what, tonight I'm not gonna watch TV. I'm going to read a book, hang out with my wife and dog and read and just be here. And what started as like one night at a time turned into two nights in a row and then three nights in a row and then a week and before you knew it, it was the new normal. So what had started as, you know, a one-off 
became my new routine. And since I've moved from Los Angeles to New Zealand, I sold my TV. I haven't watched TV in over six months now, which is insane, uh, but feels really, really good. And in the last six months, I've read more books than I have in the last like three or four years. So it's really all just about looking in the mirror and realizing what you do when you aren't thinking about it, what you do as like habit and making the necessary changes to those habits to kind of recapture your time, to reclaim it from the distraction. For me at least, doing that has made me feel like so much better. I have so much more time. I'm sleeping better because I'm not watching television or staring at my screen late into the night. I'm going to bed like earlier. I'm waking up before sunrise and getting my meditation in. And it's just all of these little changes to my habits that I've made have progressively completely redefined my daily schedule and have left me feeling happier, more fulfilled, and more mental clarity than I think I've ever had before in my life. Limit your distractions, make time for rest, and do your best to be here. And finally, step seven, this one is super important. Stop comparing yourself to others. We live in a society where we have access to the lives of some of the most successful people in the world via social media, via you know the internet. Also, we're watching other people's highlight reels on online all the time. So we do compare ourselves to others, even if we don't like to and we know that it's wrong. But I think it was President Theodore Roosevelt who said that comparison is the thief of joy. And I just couldn't agree with that statement more. We're all guilty of it, we've all done it, um, but it is a really easy way to feel down about yourself. And I think, I don't know, I don't know, I think that it's just part of our society has, at least in the United States, there is this built-in element of competition and comparison and judging yourself um, in regards to others people who are near you, your neighbors, or a colleague at work, or your best friend, whatever it is, comparing yourself to other people is not healthy. First off, every single person's life is completely different, and therefore comparing ourselves to other people does not take into account all the nuances of your life and your situation. It oversimplifies the challenges that each person has in their life. So if we just default to comparison, it's just gonna leave you feeling unfulfilled and unhappy. It's a daily practice to stop comparing. It's something that we have to remind ourselves to be aware about because if we are unaware and we are comparing, it will leave you feeling worse off. I've found it super helpful to remind myself, instead of focusing on what we don't have, focusing on what we do have and being grateful for it, replacing those feelings of inadequacy with feelings of gratitude will help us shift from negative perspectives to positive ones. And that will help us along our journey of healing and growth. Sitting here with you today and talking through all of these things um, has has not been easy for me. Um, you know, being this vulnerable with a camera and tens of thousands of people of you out there online uh, hasn't been easy. But it also feels good. It feels good to talk through these things. It feels good to share. Um, you know, to share the rough edges. And I really hope that all of you out there are doing well and know that it's okay to be, to be on your journey. We don't have to have everything figured out, but working towards wholeness is a process. It's a daily struggle and it's something that requires us to do the work and to, uh, to be to be honest and to be vulnerable and to show up. 
So, I know that right now we are all experiencing some of the most difficult times in recent history and the world feels scarier than it ever has before, which is why it's more important than ever that we all do the work and work through our personal issues to become better individuals. So if we take the time to honestly address the things that are holding us back and to make concerted efforts to change and improve our personal situations, then life will get better. And when our lives get better and we're in a better place, then we are in a better place to help others. And when that happens, that is how the world gets better, right? It's a million little acts of kindness and a million little good things that add up to a societal change and a better situation for the world. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I hope you enjoyed sitting down here with me and having an honest conversation. And um, I, I really wish you all the best of luck on your personal journeys. It's not gonna be easy but then again, nothing good in life is easy. Everything worthwhile takes time and takes effort. So take solace in that. Know that the fact that you're even here now listening to this means that you are in the right space. So if you have any tips of your own that have helped you improve your mental clarity and your mental health, please, by all means, share them down in the comment section. I would really love to begin a conversation with all of you down there and, and to share the, the things that work for you as an individual because you never know, they could be really helpful to somebody else out there. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Once again, a big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And I will see all of you out there in the next one. Best of luck on your journey. Peace.